desiblitz.com. Hi, I'm Hyde Panesser, uh, not the local cabbie, so don't worry about that. Uh, you're watching me on desiblitz.com. I'll tell you a little bit about myself in case you didn't actually catch my name at the start. My name is Hyde Panesser and, uh, and I live at home uh, with my parents. All right, there, I said it. All right, don't judge me, ladies. Single beds bring us closer together, all right? <laughs> <laughs> you genuinely look disgusted by that. <laughs> Relax, I can't take you home. You're white. <laughs> How would you describe your comedy style? Uh, I'd say I work on a lot of stereotypes um, and I try and bring them to the front and sort of break them down. So it's kind of like even when it's like a, a non-Asian audience, it's always uh, playing on stereotypes, kind of breaks it down for them. Um, and then they kind of think, OK, maybe we shouldn't think this way. Sort of thing. That's, that's kind of like what I try and do anyway. You have been dubbed as one of the brightest new talents around. How does that make you feel? <laughs> well, I don't look very new. I'm just, I feel like I'm getting on a bit. But uh, uh, I mean, it's always nice to get uh, compliments about, your, about any talents that you might have. But um, yeah, I just take it with a pinch of salt. So uh, just keep myself grounded. Like, the main thing I realised is that I can't do casual smiling anymore. <laughs> Some of you already know what this is. But when I didn't used to have a beard, I used to be able to walk down the street. If I caught someone's eye from across the road, I could give them a bit of a nod and a wry smile. I can't do that anymore because 85% of my facial features are covered. I'm going to show teeth every time I see someone just so they know that I'm smiling at them. <laughs> I always look overexcited to see everyone I meet. I'm like, <laughs> Because this is me not smiling. <laughs> it looks like I'm offering that fight to everyone I meet. So basically I have to look like I'm on cocaine just so they feel that I'm friendly enough to approach. If you need any, see me after the show, right? <laughs> and who are your top five comics of all time? <laughs> this is like the, always the hardest question to answer. It's like if someone asks you, oh, what's your favourite piece of music? It's like, um, but I grew up, uh, you know, watching a lot of the, 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 the greats like uh, Richard Pryor, uh, Eddie Murphy when he done the, the, the two, uh, Raw and uh, Delirious, that kind of stuff. Um, there's uh, Felix Dexter, who I don't know if you know from uh, uh, The Real McCoy. And always, obviously, I grew up watching um, Goodness Gracious Me and that sort of stuff. So I can't really narrow it down to like five acts, but I think that's probably enough in there to sort of give you an idea about what, what I sort of like, but yeah. Black people get Nando's. Uh, <laughs> I'm back best to laugh again. <laughs> the rest of them all fucking scared to shit. Uh, no, uh, Polish people, they get being cute. Um, <laughs> You're presenting your debut solo show. Uh, why do you think it's important to highlight some of the issues which you faced uh, when growing up? And can we have a sneak preview as to what you'll be sharing with the audiences? <laughs> so the show is called 99 Problems But My Beard Ain't One and it's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek tongue look at um, people's perception of uh, when they see a beard, like there's a lot of issues going on uh, in the world now with like terrorism and stuff like that and, and, I, and I think people get an idea from media about anyone with a beard or anyone with brown skin and what they look like so I'm just trying to break that um, stereotype down and I've gone through things in my life um, through like bullying and um, moving into a place where they're predominantly white um, uh, ethnicities and stuff so I was literally the only brown person in the room uh, and in the in the actual postcode but um, so I'm just trying to but it felt like I was more welcome there than I was when I came back to sort of the Hounslow yeah yeah so I'm just kind of bringing that to the forefront and saying that you don't really need to blend in because there's a whole thing of like oh what is society going to think about the way you look about the way you think yeah and I'm just trying to say that you you, you need to have your individuality um, and that's what I'm trying to uh, focus on in this show, just breaking those, those barriers down. What is the best advice you can give to up-and-coming comics? How can someone learn to be funny on stage? 
my advice would be don't get into it because otherwise my job's going to go. Uh, but no, uh, I think you should stick at it. If it's a real passion of yours, then just it, practice obviously makes perfect. And a lot of people say that, um, but it does it does help. You need to get on stage as much, write about five minutes of material and, and try and get to as many open mic nights if you're just starting out um, and just, just keep at it. It's a, it's a real uphill struggle, um, but if you love it, then you'll, you'll carry on and you just develop from, from there but just don't stop writing. Before you leave us, finally, what's your ultimate goal in life, Hyde? Uh, just simply to be happy. That's literally it. <laughs> Thank you, Hyde, Panessa, for joining us on this Blitz. We wish you all the best. Cheers, thanks. Thank you very much. My name is Hyde Panessa. Thank you.